Today's topic, research methods and designs. Throughout my academic career, I'm teaching research methods for more than 20 years. I've always uh, focused on the notion that research is not rocket science. We're all com conducting research on a daily basis whenever we are making a decision based on information that we have or uh, perceptions and feelings that we have. That being said, it's always important to keep in mind that when we are working with formal academic uh, research, one doesn't simply do research. We need to understand the difference between different paradigms and different methodologies in order for us to conduct research that is helpful, effective, and meaningful, which will enable us to uh, extract uh, recommendations, implications, and guide our practices with. So with that in mind, let's check what are the main research uh, methodologies that we have at our disposal or that we make use of in the academic educational sector. The first one is quantitative research, quantitative methods, qualitative methods, and mixed methods. Now, from my experience, I know that most uh, graduate students and most students talk about quantitative and qualitative and we all know the difference that quantitative is numbers, qualitative is words and feelings. However, when it comes to the specifics, I've noticed that the uh, differences between both is not very clear cut and sometimes uh, many graduate students struggle with the differentiation between them. Even though they are uh, this doesn't mean that the difference is not clear. It's more on the application and the practice of things and the research questions that come with each and whatnot. So let's start. Quantitative research, it's very important for us to keep in mind that the origins of quantitative research are based on the assumption that there is a specific truth out there that we can find and understand through scientific principles. It is grounded in the positivist paradigm. So the quantitative approach keeps in mind and aims at explaining nature through one approach or through uh, a theory or whatnot. And more importantly, quantitative methodologies are based on the notion that if I understand something with a group of individuals or if I conduct an experiment now within the scientific context, uh, let's say in physics, it will apply somewhere else. So I can generalize and predict to another location. That's what quantitative research focuses on. I can understand. I can understand with a small group or relatively small, smaller group than the whole population, but I can generalize and transfer to another context. Qualitative research is based on the belief that truth is not unified. There is no one truth that explains a particular phenomenon, but rather uh, we have different viewpoints based on our experiences, based on our uh, feelings, our uh, opinions and whatnot. And this is grounded in the interpretivist paradigm. So qualitative methods does not try to predict or generalize. So when I'm talking about my feelings, I don't expect these feelings to generalize to somebody else. I don't expect my exper experience to generalize to somebody else. So this is the biggest uh, difference that I found graduate students to have uh, a misunderstanding about. If I'm conducting quantitative research, my major aim is to generalize and predict for the future. If I'm conducting qualitative research, my major aim is to understand nuances and experiences within the context that they're in. And these are both guided by the paradigm with which each research method is guided by. Mixed methods design on the contrary is sort of in the middle. It's the methodology that uh, is based on the notion that our reality is consistently interpreted and changing, 
but there are certain truths that we can depend on, find, and, and understand. It's grounded in the pragmatist approach, and it mainly focuses on finding the truth and explaining the nuances that might differ. So that's where the three main methods we have in educational research. Quantitative research in particular, let's zoom in on this. The philosophy is that there is one reality that's objectively viewed by the researcher. The type of reasoning we usually have primarily deductive, where research is the researcher, we formulate a hypothesis, we test it, and we conduct an experiment with uh, analyzing data and uh, providing uh, implications and predictions. This is what we've always used with uh, the scientific methodology that we cover in the classroom and in uh, our courses and in K-12 uh, science courses. The role of the researcher in the quantitative research is controlled, structured. We try to minimize our bias and we try to not be subjective. We try to be as objective as possible. I want my measurement to be uh, irrespective of my feelings. The advantages, it allows me, as I said earlier, to generalize and predict, and it enables us to have informed decisions. So if I'm a policymaker and I'm interested in making a decision, I will not go to the qualitative paradigm. I will check quantitative research because I want the numbers, I want the evidence, and I want the uh, generalizable evidence that I can base my decision on. The disadvantages... It, uh, it provides limited uh, detail and it, is, it doesn't provide the ability for us to understand the nuances. Qualitative research, on the other hand, it is based on the philosophy that there are multiple realities and the context has a major impact on how the reality is all about. The type of reasoning is primarily inductive. The researcher you work in exploratory way. And that's why whenever we are conducting qualitative research, these are guided by exploratory questions. I cannot say in a qualitative research, if I'm, if I'm interested in uh, understanding the nuances of what happens in a particular school and a particular uh, context, I cannot say that I'm answering the question of what strategies help students understand science, like this fixed. I have to specify the context within which I'm working because what strategies uh, help students understand X, Y, and Z, this is more general and this is more assertive and final. It is a decision about a truth, what strategies help students. However, talking about qualitative research, it's more about exploring different strategies or exploring perceptions about strategies that work with students in a particular context, so on and so forth. The role of the researcher is highly participatory. We do not try to uh, distance ourselves from the context within which we're working. We are part, as a researcher, I'm part of the instruments within the research itself. So the reality is I cannot be unbiased. I am biased, but I acknowledge my bias. I do say this is where I'm coming from. This is what bias I bring with me. We will be talking about these in other uh, sessions. So check those uh, once uh, the time comes. Advantages. It enables flexible discourse and a deeper understanding. I can delve into the nuances of what happens in a particular con context. I can check the individual differences within a school setting, within a classroom, to, to see how each student is uh, perceiving or experiencing the teaching strategies I'm implementing, which a quantitative research cannot. Disadvantages, it is time consuming and it does not provide the ability to generalize and definitely it is subjective. So uh, subjective is 
both good and bad, were, but within the context of the bigger framework of uh, things in research, if I want to generalize, I cannot depend on the subjectivity of qualitative research. Quantitative and qualitative, so it is structured, statistical analyses, objectives and conclusions, and survey experiments, while qualitative, we have unstructured data in the form of uh, words, narratives, audio, uh, audio recordings, uh, visuals, observations, and whatnot. Uh, the statistical analyses, we don't have statistical analyses in qualitative. We have more summaries of the data that we collected. While quantitative strives to be objective, qualitative is highly subjective conclusions, and the survey, experiment, uh, and questionnaires with measurements tend to be the quantitative tools, while interviews, focus groups, observations are the tools for qualitative research. In reality, they are the yin and yang of, uh, of research methodologies. They complement each other. One provides the solid evidence for generalizability, but one provides you with the nuances and the uh, deeper understanding of specifics and what works in particular context. Now, what if I told you that you can do the, like you can benefit from the best of both worlds? That's what mixed methods research is all about. The philosophical paradigm, uh, it is grounded in pragmatism and realism, where researchers make use of the philosophical approach that best fits the research problem at hand. So it is not a purist philosophy, but more a pragmatist philosophy. The type of reasoning, it's a combination of inductive and deductive reasoning. The researcher, again, makes use of what works best in answering the research question. So if I'm interested in uh, understanding uh, what strategies are effective in increasing students' performance in math, I will definitely make use of the quantitative. But if I want to understand uh, what uh, works best within the context of my uh, students who may be uh, predominantly from minority groups, let's say, then I will go with some qualitative data, their opinions, their perceptions, some interviews with them to understand what their interests are. So it provides both and we go with the one that is relevant to the question at hand. The role of the researcher, it is controlled and structured, however, as much as we try to be objective, we are participatory in the uh, process, especially when we're making use of qualitative, uh, qualitative uh, activities and data, and we do acknowledge our bias when that is the situation. Advantages, it combines the statistical finding with the personal stories to give you a more holistic picture and enables you to generalize while also uh, keeping an eye on the specifics and contextual aspects. Disadvantages, it is quite complex and it requires the researcher to have uh, skills and expertise in both uh, methodologies and usually it is time consuming and it uh, requires multiple resources. Most of the time, mixed methods research, that's why we see that uh, research teams are becoming more prominent whenever we want to work with uh, mixed methods because each team member brings a particular strength to the, uh, to the whole project. In reality, I see, I found this uh, quite some time ago, I really appreciate the mix between qualitative and quantitative and through different uh, different discussions that we might have in the future or different sessions that we might have you will notice more and more how the mix between quantitative and qualitative can be some individuals prefer their water more on the hot side others prefer more on the cold side and then there's the mix the whole continuum in between and in reality that's what mixed methods is all about you might find studies that are mainly qualitative with some quantitative aspects you'll find some that are 
totally quantitative with no qualitative or mainly quantitative with some minor qualitative uh, uh, aspects to it. And you might find... Uh, and you might find studies that go hand in hand with equal levels of focus on the qualitative and the quantitative. It all depends on the objective, the available resources, uh, the skills and expertise of the research team, the philosophical uh, paradigm that the team uh, adheres to, and uh, the skills that the researcher has and is more comfortable with. So there are there are multiple variables and factors that impact what uh, methodology you will follow. Definitely, it's first and foremost guided by the research question, but there are multiple variables that also come to the picture. If you are interested in learning more about mixed methods design, uh, Cresswell, uh, John Cresswell's work is quite prominent in this area. Uh, you'll find multiple uh, books. These are the most prominent in the educational field, Cresswell's work. You have mixed methods, you have uh, some of his uh, text, their textbooks uh, talk about quantitative, qualitative and mixed and the research design. So make sure if you are working on uh, research methodologies, make sure to check some of Cresswell's work. If you are also uh, interested in this. Another resource that is extremely helpful and valuable for I found throughout my years is the Research Methods Knowledge Base. It's by Trotcham and Donnelly. The good thing about this uh, textbook is that it is available online for free. You can actually visit their website which is uh, conjointly.com and you can navigate throughout the whole book. The nice thing about this textbook is that it is uh, presented in a very user-friendly and uh, not highly complex terminology. It's an easy read. They don't uh, overwhelm uh, graduate students, but it provides you with an overview of the different aspects of research. Make sure to check it. I'm sure you'll find it to be helpful. That being said, I hope that at the present time you feel a bit more good about knowing the difference or the general idea between quantitative and qualitative. And in future uh, videos, I'll be delving deeper into the specifics of each. And if you have any question or topic that you want me to address, please make sure to send me a note and I'll try my best to answer in due time.